Hi there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Uh, this video, we're just going to talk a bit about the uh, Deep Archimedia, um, I guess, second impressions, if you will, since this is the first rotation that we've gotten besides the uh, the initial one. Um, I personally am enjoying as a slightly more difficult level of content, uh, as opposed to doing, like, level caps and whatnot. Um, there have been a couple things, because I did my... the what You had to unlock Deep Archimedia, and then you had to run, like, the actual Elite, right? And we can take a look at it here. I like it here. Looks the Lloyd has us you have to go through and select a bunch of stuff, uh, match up your weapons, like your primary, secondary, melee, um, enable elite. In order to unlock elite, you have to use everything, uh, which is kind of fair. And then once you unlock it, in order to get the consume or the reward pools that you need, um, you do have the option of not selecting one thing, right? Uh, and it's pretty clear already. Uh, the meta is going to be find something that is a staple for you. Um, on the Elite Archimedia, <clears throat> and find something, like, I'm probably going to use uh, a very tanky build for Deja. He's able to just run through and just face tank everything, just got to keep the uh, his three up. Um, but in terms of, like, dying, in terms of getting, like, you know, vulnerability buffs, he's still a general frame a generalist and does very very well this year or this rotation um my go-to damage source was actually the cycron uh using the tenant cycron uh getting those heat dots with an encumber build and i can show you that here put velocity on neja himself and it's a heat based cycron and we just did encumber with uh, a little bit of punch through and corrosive. Pretty basic. Um, and ruinous extension, obviously, because you don't have to worry about uh, ammo because it's a battery. So let's talk about dealing with this, uh, this new Elite Archimedia that we have, the Elite version of the Deep Archimedia. Because um, frankly, uh, it can be a bit tough, especially for those of you that uh, are struggling in Steel Path. Uh, I would say it's pretty easy uh, to quantify it as the jump from regular star chart to Steel Path. Um, and then there's that jump again. It is tougher than uh, Archon Hunts. It gets strong. Uh, the enemies get stronger based on how many people are running the mission. Um, but obviously, so if you're trying to do it with a group, uh, ideally I'd recommend doing, uh, like a two man, if you're trying to make it as easy as possible on you, uh, though this week, uh, you did have to do 30 eyes. Um, and I ended up with a fairly competent squad. I don't think there was any issues. Everybody's pets was going down, uh, which is... Because of the explosions, the uh, Void Blast, uh, as to be expected. Um, nobody really had an issue with surviving. We just knocked it out. Um, so let's talk about, like, some second impressions, if you will. Uh, I can see pretty easily that the meta is going to be, now that Elite Archimedia is unlocked, um, picking a frame... Uh, or if you don't care about the frame, picking a weapon that you really enjoy and sort of utilizing that to be able to sort of one-shot the Elite Archimedia. Uh, I'm probably going to be picking Neja. Um, it's a comfort pick, plus I have a ton of builds on him. Um, so I'm not really going to have issues with him staying alive, especially because this ne Neja is... Uh, pretty comfortable in like the 2000s, 3000s. Um, so four, five hundred, even with like the additional damage that you're having to deal with, the explosions, 
um, really just isn't going to have an issue. Like, unless I'm straight up having coordination issues, I'm not really going to go down on this Neja. It's a health conversion, adaptation, triple lumber setup, high investment. Um, and I'm probably just going to pick a weapon, probably a secondary, uh, that's just really, really strong, if you will. But that being said, there are some things that are pretty apparent so far. Uh, you have to be able, like, survivability is pretty paramount. You get mobbed, and there's so much random damage. Um, especially with the new modifier, it's the first time I've seen that, and I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Because there was the over the mini overguard rework where they removed a bunch of CC that was applying to overguard enemies, um, and now that we see how the Archimedia is being used, it's pretty apparent that they were they changed the overguard to make deep Archimedia tougher because uh, the enemies spawn so much closer to you. It, it's very noticeable. Um, because as soon as you run out of the room, there's like no enemies, right? But when the first mission was uh, the one where you have to mix the two elements together uh, to make a second tier element, um, the enemies are practically spawning on top of you. And to be honest, I'm not mad at it. It, it makes you feel mobbed. There basically is any area where you can't look at them directly. There's always a ton of enemies uh, because of the spawn points, because the stuff can come out of the ground. Um, enemies can spawn very, very close to you. Um, so AoE clear is at a premium. There's also a new mechanic. Um, I, I can't remember if it was mentioned. I'm pretty sure it was. But in the Alchemist uh, mission... I had a, and I'm pretty sure you guys do too, uh, there was a, where enemies couldn't be damaged except by the ampules of matching damage type. And to be honest, I wasn't mad at it. It, it seemed like a very fair nuance. I would like to see the aura that they have be a little bit more noticeable. But it seems like a fair thing, specifically for that game type. So it was a little bit annoying to deal with, at least until I realized exactly what it was. The enemies show up as having iframes. You can still throw a ton of statuses on them, which is kind of weird because I was using them as nukes. Um, like using Neja's Augment, you can stab them. Once the, uh, like, as soon, as soon as you throw the ampule and they get damage dealt to them, provided, like, the electricity one seems to one-shot, and I get that. But, like, the heat one, I was able to uh, charge them up with a shit ton of statuses, and then, while firing the Psychron, throw the ampule, and as the ampule hit, I was able to uh, hit Divine Retribution on the four, and sort of like mini nuke a tile. Obviously the range on it's destroyed. But it's a nice little combo. And that felt pretty cool. You know, just sort of as you were going through figuring that stuff out. Um, it's been a while since we've had anything that you had to turn. Like you had to have like two brain cells that interacted in Warframe. Um, even the final mission with the uh, 30 eyes where it had its damage all jacked up um, the Eximus spawn rate was pretty nuts uh, and I'm uploading like a as right now I'm uploading like a raw footage of it uh, so you guys can see like it, it was it was very cool having that level of enemy density um, it's pretty apparent that they're actually, like, really trying to get the, like, graphics intensity under control. 
I just wish they would stop putting fog on everything. It's so graphics intensive. And the shadows. But they keep, like, closing in on you. Like, how close things are when they load in. You can be, like, 10 to 15 meters away from something and a door isn't loaded in. So if you're moving fast enough, you'll think a door's open. And then it'll load like a frame before you get it. Like, especially with this Neja, because it's got a little bit of speed on it. Not a lot. Like, it's not a total, like, a speed tank. But it's got a little bit of speed on it. And I'm running into doors that haven't loaded in. Especially if the host has, like, a bad ping. But anyway, going back to the Deep Archimedia, or the Elite Deep Archimedia, or however you want to say what would it be like, uh, EDA or something like that? I don't think it deserves an acronym. Elite Archimedia. Um, I like the challenge. It, as minor as it is, uh, obviously any of you that have done like level caps or something like that, this is not a challenge in the least bit. Um, but for the casual player and for most of the people in the clan that still struggle with Steel Path, if you're one of the people that are asking about Steel Path builds, um, this is definitely going to be a wild time for you guys. And I'm not going to take away from that. Like, at, at one point, like when Steel Path came out, it was obviously a little easier for me because I was around when there was no Steel Path. So I had all the mods and the builds set up. So when Steel Path came out, it was just another thing to do, right? But if you're trying to get through the game and you're burning through missions and you're doing the star chart and you get to elite deep archimedia this could legitimately hurt like spawning in especially if you're running like merciless builds that's probably the only thing where i'd say like eh maybe don't um merciless builds get kicked in the ass if you're dealing with the uh, the enemies that, uh, like, if you don't have any stacks and you're trying to gain stacks, but there's an enemy that grants overguard and recharges their overguard, you legitimately might just not be able to kill anything. So the only thing I could say in terms of, like, a, you know, having been through it a couple times, I've even done some extra runs to test out different builds. Uh, anything that can deal with a ton of enemies at once, say like the Phantasma, beam weapons that have a ton of punch through, or like, uh, like even the Ignis did pretty good. Uh, the Phantasma was probably the only one where I was like, damn, this is actually performing really well. Uh, though it wouldn't be appropriate for the 30 eyes, right? Um, but anything that can deal with a bunch of enemies, uh, running two corrosive shards, um, for corrosive stacks to get the full strip makes corrosive heat absolutely wonderful. Um, I was regularly getting ticks a uh, million plus, um, like 20, 30 million occasionally, just because of how quick the enemies die. It, so it's nothing like super impressive, but uh, the encumber build on a pistol seems like the way to go, uh, especially on something that can chain. Uh, the Cycron outperformed the new core. Um, and the Compressor did really good. That was the first one I did. What I had to unlock the Deep Archimedia or the Elite Deep Archimedia with. Um, and just anything that can generate shields and can't be one shot appears to be paying a premium in this game mode. Because the fact is, is that there's a lot that can one shot you here. On this Neja. I am running a ton of tank. It's triple Umbra. I've got Grace on here. Um, I've got health conversion. I've got adaptation. Um, it's even got two blue armor shards. So just before anything gets stacked up, I've got 1300 armor. And with adaptation, I'm regularly getting warding halos in the millions. Um, if not higher. I think the highest that I got was like 150 million uh, Halo. And that's the damage that I've taken. So there's a plenty of stuff that can do a ton of damage. You have to get your survivability down. That's pretty obvious. Um, but if you've done level caps, this is just another day, right? 
but I was really surprised with the Phantasma, but it's pretty clear going forward that the meta is going to be have one thing, especially with the Elite, ha have one thing um, that you know can do the game modes really well and just ignore the Vosfer. I mean, anybody who's in my category, I, I rolled like 600k Vosfer for Arcanes. When it came out, like, arcane-wise, I'm done. I'm literally just getting Crescendo and Duplicates now. That's the only thing left. And with as cheap as they are, I might actually just go ahead and buy them. Like, I've got the plot to buy them, even a rank 5 right now, on both, because they're so cheap. So, um, the pans are paid dividends, obviously. Uh, I've seen people run Hounds. That do really, really well. Anything that can spread status, especially for, for the uh, galvanized base damage mod boost to damage, pays really good dividends. Um, I tried a bunch of different stuff, like uh, the Prisma Oma obviously does very, very well with an influence build, uh, pure electric. Um, even the Hespar did okay. Uh, though the issue is, is when you start getting, I would recommend if you are going to run whatever the frame is bring something that can deal with the mechs uh i'll tag it in the video but there was a bone widow that i don't know what caused this thing to spawn in the way it is but me and the three other people probably sat there and shot the fucking thing for a total of 10 minutes because it had so much damage reduction on it like and i'm hitting it for fifteen thousand on a weapon that is an encumber it's an encumber cycron but i'm hitting it and finally i just had to melee it to death i mean we eventually burned it down but that's including like uh we had like a Saren on the team we had uh a steinax uh me so we're dealing with a ton of damage increase the Saren was doing a ton of damage, uh, even though they probably built a little bit more into survivability because I was competing with them damage-wise. Um, but the Steinax for the 30 Eyes fight uh, was basically providing us with Overguard, which we all appreciate. Um, but it was providing us with the Overguard necessary to be able to face tank stuff. So I basically just, on the 30 Eyes fight, just spent my time... Uh, do, dealing damage to the boss, but every now and then you'd see me run around and kill stuff, and I'm throwing my chakram over and over and over. It's because I'm trying to generate energy orbs for Steinax, because you can see his energy starting to go down. Um, and eventually I got a carpet. But either way, so maybe I'm turning into a Nezhamain. I've only ever used him because he's just so easy to use. Uh, but in this, like, Grendel works. Like, Grendel generally works. Um, the Overguard hurts you a little bit when you're trying to, like, uh, get your armor uh, for the enemies in your gullet. Um, Neja doesn't have that problem. Very self-sustaining. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a, a, an Elite Archimedia build for Neja. Uh, but it... The, the high investment Neja that was kind of a meme ended up paying huge dividends. He's very hard to kill. So, anyway, so I'm just going to cut this video a little bit short, at least as far as what my videos are. Uh, I can't recommend more finding a frame or a weapon. If you don't care about the frame, have a weapon go to, especially if you're in the clan or an alliance. Um, invest heavily in a frame, I would recommend. Uh, I am doing, I am offering carries fairly regularly for, like, all the alliance mates. Like, I was, when I was testing out builds, I was posting in alliance chat a bunch, like, is anybody doing Deep Archimedia? Is anybody doing Deep Archimedia? So I could carry people through it. Um, while I was just testing builds, because I didn't care about the rewards. And maybe that'll be one of the things I do for a bit while people get their builds set up. 
Because once I get through it, I can run through it with anything. And if you, like I said, if you've done level caps, if you're comfortable with quote unquote higher tier content, as much as, like, I'm doing air quotes, you can't see it. But for anything like that, uh, this is game mode just isn't an issue for you. It's just uh, the only thing that I was like genuinely surprised about was the enemy in the alchemy mission or whatever it is that couldn't be damaged at all. And even then, I just sort of had fun with it, right? Uh, that was kind of a nice, like, I, I enjoyed that, having, like, an enemy or two. And it ended up being 10% of the enemies, but you know how it is, like, if you can't kill them, tends, they tend to bunch up, right? Like, it's like, oh, they spawn in at 10%, but if you're not killing them, they end up being, like, the only thing, and there ended up being, like, a hallway filled with those little bastards. But it's just, it is what it is. You just basically run around, pick up the ampules, and throw them at the thing. But, yeah, overall, uh, enjoyable game mode. It's a little bit of ch challenge, but obviously if you have builds on stuff, you don't care about this. Uh, the only thing I would say, maybe it's not common knowledge, but when I was doing my testing runs, if you die in a deep Archimedia, or the Elite Archimedia mission, avoid Angel spawns right? Avoid angel spawns. And you can revive a teammate. Like, I don't know if people don't know that or not, but I noticed people that would go down and then they'd just bail. Like, if they were fucking around somewhere and they were like 400, 500 meters away, which is very legitimate on this tile set, and nobody could get to them, especially if you're running the no operator like the no operator difficulty button somebody might not be able to get through to you really really quickly so avoid angel spawns and then you have to kill the void angel and that's not a big deal uh obviously the void angel spawns in because it's the elite archimedia it spawns in at like almost 400 right um and you just take your time burn it down uh because you're running a bunch of random shit you're really not going to have a build guaranteed to be able to blow those up. Like, you're not going to always have, like, an Incarnon weapon uh, with, like, a Zada's Whisper build, right? Where you can nuke one of those things. But other than that, the toughest thing is, honestly, the mechs. The, the damage reduction or something gets absolutely out of control at times. And God forbid, God forbid somebody stands in one of those healing pools for the enemy like you're not you legitimately might not be able to kill the fucking thing if somebody if even if it's not you it's somebody else it just starts healing shit um and unless you have a setup where you can one shot it uh say like a zephyr with like an architytron's like slam capacitor build right um Unless you have some insane setup that you've RNG'd, if you're running all the weapons, you're probably not going to have anything that can burn those down super fast. So run your normal builds, just take your time. Um, anything with a battery, and I've noticed over the 20, 30 runs that I've done, that pistols overall are performing the best. Heavy encumber builds your radiation damage, corrosive heat, anything like that. Like, you need a big dot. And I've been favoring, honestly, I've been favoring heat dots for this stuff because you can out-compete the overguard enemies, the, the enemies the, with the three arms that are granting overguard. You can burn down the overguard because the heat will uh, scale infinitely, right? Or... To whatever that integer is, 16,000 and change. Um, you can out-compete it without necessarily having to uh, focus on that one guy with the three arms because he, sometimes he loves to face the wall and you don't want to run into a group of enemies necessarily at that moment depending on what the enemies are. So you can out-compete the, the overguard grant from that guy. So it is what it is. Um, this is just my general thoughts. It's a... It's, a fun game mode. Um, 
to be honest, when doing the alchemy mission, I wish the spawn rate was like that all the fucking time. I'm, I'm not even joking. I wish the spawn rate was like that all the time. There was always a ton of shit to kill. Whatever is different about that, say because there's so much stuff nearby that can block your view of enemies, the spawn rate on that mission is fucking phenomenal. I personally love that shit. Um, I just wish the enemies had better AI. But in terms of, like, the, the enemy density, all of that stuff, good shit. Uh, that being said, you know, pour one out for the Architytron. They nerfed the living piss out of it. Uh, what is it, like a factor of 20 or 200 or something like that? Um, 2 to the 10th compared to, like, 11 times. Because it's a 1,000% it's a increase, but it used to be 2 to the 10th. So it was a massive increase. So... You know, those builds aren't going to work anymore, or you're going to have to go back to running, like, massive Eclipse bonuses and whatnot. But I've been enjoying running Neja, like, some tanky frame. I've run Grendel. Uh, even Protea was enjoyable. Um, obviously, the more invested build, the better. I've even run, like, a really cheap Neja that was, like, a two-forma, three-forma Neja. I forget which one. And one was... The cheap Neja didn't even or had like an aura forma in it, and it was running its native polarity, so it was technically a two forma build. Um, and Neja seems to be the most generically high performing one. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed is uh, anything that can deal a ton of damage in an AoE or like a projectile, so like the Archaplasmor, the electric one did really, really well. Um, even the Ignis did really well. Uh, anything that it could abuse, uh, two green shards. So, like, the, the Synapse did pretty well. Um, I haven't tested on this Deep Archimedia because it's got 30 eyes on it, and I just got home from work. Uh, but I was doing that last week, and that did really well. Um, the new core even did all right. Uh, but the Psychron worked wonders. It was very, very easy with the Psychron, so if you get that, that's a really solid pickup. Uh, the Phantasma did really, really well. Do a heat build. I did Corrosive. That was probably the best performer. Um, so anything like that, anything that can provide strip, because uh, if you're relying on like abilities to strip, uh, energy can sometimes be a bit of an issue. Um, but this is a Hunter Adrenaline Neja, so I just need to take damage, right? Um, and even with the damage mitigation that this Neja has, you can still get one shot if you're not paying attention, and it's happened. Um, so, anyway, that's my initial thoughts. Uh, I like the damage type resistance, or the uh, I like the, the fact that they're the small group of enemies uh, that are immune, that you have to pick up an ampule. That feels super appropriate to the mission in terms of like a specific difficulty or a specific mechanic tied to a specific mission type. That actually feels really nice. You know, like it, it makes me kind of wish there was like something for Spy or something for Exterminate or something like that. Like having a specific me mechanic tied to a mission type that felt super appropriate. It, obviously, it could have been something different, but like it seems like the with the mechanic, generally the enemies uh, die pretty quickly because the the ampules are incredibly strong. But having that mechanic tied to something like that, because that mechanic can't exist outside of something that doesn't have the ampule, right? The the little pickups. So I enjoyed that mechanic. It it gave you something else to do while you're running around looking for one of the two. Uh, ampule types that you needed. But anyway, this is initial thoughts, seeing the rotations. Uh, I like the difficulty gimmicks. Uh, some of them are pretty good. The only one that I thought might need like people to consider is the uh, the 
Linums? Whatever the things are from Daviri that uh, drain health, right? The little ghosts that are immune. If you're not aware of what that does, my first mission, or when I unlocked Deep Archimedia, or Elite Deep Archimedia, uh, I was on Protea thinking everything was going to be fine because I had overguards. Um, ran into the middle, like tried to jump through the middle of them and got like two ticked, right? My bad, I didn't know. So something when you're when that's on the menu of like the the possible gimmicks, um, being able to recover health, not necessarily making it a top priority. I'm not saying that, but being able to passively gain health is actually a pretty big deal. And one of the things I was doing was uh, using the Panzer Hunter recovery, so the spores as they get spread around. As they deal damage, they're giving me health back. Helped combat that a ton. So, other than that, that seems like the most basic understanding of this. Um, without spoiling it too much, it's just a hard mission. So, we're going to figure out like what combination of gimmicks are really shit. Um, I'm sure I'm going to encounter one that's going to be super annoying. We all are. But so far, everything that's been, you know, coming through has been fair. Obviously, this is only our second one. Um, but I like the the alchemy gimmick. That It seems appropriate. I was surprised about that. But anyway, rant over. Not that it was really a big rant, but just like, you know, shower thoughts about the new game mode. Uh, beam weapons, you need to consider being able to recover health. Um... I recommend Panzer with Hunter Recovery. It seemed to just sort of fix it right outright. Uh, and maybe in terms of like a consideration, fully invest in a frame that you can run every time once you unlock Elite Archimedia. Fully invest in a frame and have that be the one box you don't check. So you have like guaranteed survivability. Grendel works, Protea works. Neja works. Uh, anything that's running like a health conversion, adaptation, blessing, grace build, anything that can abuse that does incredibly well. Um, so anything like that. Or, and even, you know, like I'm sure Revenant. I've, I've seen some people playing Revenant. But once you get to Elite Arc Media, if you haven't gotten there already, because uh, I know some people got bit in the ass because they weren't ranked 5. Uh, so this might be their first time with it. Um, Maybe consider getting a frame, investing in the frame, couple of forma, uh, getting it set up, and then RNGing the weapons and just sort of dealing with whatever gets sent to you. It, that seems like the comfiest way, or maybe having a weapon that you know can carry um, or deal enough damage based on the type of enemy. Um, but it seems like they gave us the tools, to be honest. So... It is what it is. I hope this helps. Uh, just This is just sort of shower thoughts on the subject. Anyway, take it easy, guys. Thanks for listening. If you got this far, have a blessed day, dudes.